Here at Nomad Capitalist, we recommend that everyone who invests in precious metals moves at least a portion of those precious metals offshore to a safe, secure, neutral storage location where you can enjoy the full asset protection benefits that gold and silver offer you. After all, probably part of why you're buying that gold and silver is as what I would call government insurance. And to have it all in your home country, to me, just doesn't make sense. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my criteria for finding the best countries to store gold offshore and share my favorites with you. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson, and if you'd like to learn more about how Nomad Capitalist helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors to go where they're treated best, learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. Now let's talk about gold, okay? If you own precious metals, I believe that having them somewhere outside of your jurisdiction gives you an extra boost of asset protection. You don't have to worry about someone breaking in and stealing them or your house burning down or God knows what else happens. And so the process that I look at is, you know, if you're buying precious metals, you shouldn't store them all as, I remember I interviewed a guy once who said, put them in a coffee can in your mother-in-law's basement. To me, there's a lot of issues with that. I think having a couple of gold coins or silver bars lying around for whatever purpose you may need them for, you know, keep them in the safe, not a bad idea. But if I'm dealing with mass, you know, precious metals investments, I want a country uh, that is neutral. Uh, I want to store them in a country uh, that doesn't have unholy alliances. I would generally avoid uh, European Union countries because while well, Austria or Germany may be good picks, uh, Amsterdam potentially for some folks. Um, I like Dublin as a city. They have a storage facility or two. Uh, who knows what the European Union does? I would generally avoid the United States, particularly if I'm an American, a former American, or someone who has exposure to the United States because the United States seems to stick their hand in a lot of people's business all around the world. You'll see people who've never even been to the country. They're entangled in something that the U.S. is doing. If I was an American, I might even avoid Canada for as much as Canada is neutral, they have a good relationship with the U.S. Uh, I might, uh, I would probably avoid places that uh, are under the thumb of some government that, you know, some superpower, right? So uh, if I'm Russian and I'm worried about Russia, I'm probably not going to go and store my gold in, you know, Belarus, right? It's such a symbiotic relationship. Again, same thing with the U.S. and Canada. Also with, you know, the U.S. and Belize, for example, or some of these tiny little countries that don't have much, you know, power on their own that might, uh, you know, be willing to cooperate. And again, we're not talking about hiding anything here. For many of you, actually, Storing gold offshore is one of the few non-reportable offshore assets you can have. We're not talking about hiding. We're just talking about putting a firewall between you and your metals. Now, one thing that I have thought recently is that while a place like Hong Kong has had its fair share of issues recently, uh, there's still potentially something interesting about a place like Hong Kong where you have it backed up by China, which obviously can defend itself. It's kind of the opposite of the, you know, don't store a bunch of stuff in Belize because they'll just do whatever people ask them to do. Obviously, China doesn't want to get pushed around. Um, so I'm not saying go and store your metals in Iran or something like that, but, you know, Hong Kong maybe is an interesting place to consider. What I look for on the actual uh, logistics side is, um, you know, what is the country's commitment to stability as a wealth haven. Okay, we're not looking for a country that just got in the game two minutes ago. So while Thailand is being pitched now around Asia as you know, the new safe haven for wealth, um, you know, kind of the entry level safe haven versus Singapore, you know, their currency is, is, has done relatively well amongst Asian currencies, et cetera. You know, to me, Thailand is just too new. I'm, I, I know a guy, he has a vault in Bangkok, um, just too new for me. Um, so you want a jurisdiction that's been established, that's stable, again, that's neutral, you know, they're not um, in cahoots with everyone else. They do their own thing. They have their own policies and they can defend those policies and their own values. But I also want a place where you've got good logistics. Um, so good, you know, people uh, that you can call, that you can speak their language, um, that you can buy, sell, uh, potentially borrow against if you want to. I don't do debt, but you can borrow against. Um, that you can obviously store and that the facilities are good. Okay. I was at Le Freeport, uh, Le Freeport in Singapore many, many years ago. It's one of the safest vaults that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, this is James Bond, Jason Bourne level stuff. It's incredible. 
and I got a really nice tour through there on, on more than one occasion. You go to some of the vaults in Panama, for example, not only are they going to be more geared towards a Spanish-speaking audience, some of them probably have uh, U.S. and Canadian clients, but uh, the language barrier might be more of an issue. The vaults just didn't impress me, right? So you want to go to a place that has not only the stability and the neutrality and the infrastructure and, and has a reputation for that, and they didn't just get in the game yesterday, but you want to have obviously a super safe facility. Uh, and so what are my top picks? Uh, for me, I think Singapore is the number one pick because it has become the Switzerland of Asia. And I'm always looking for the next, right? We've talked a lot for many, many years of Nomad Capitalist, what's the next Singapore? But Singapore actually is the next Switzerland when it comes to being a wealth haven. And as wealth in the world starts to move back from the west and the trajectory starts to move back to the east, uh, to me, Singapore is well positioned. Partially because they built this whole thing from the ground up. Switzerland's obviously been around for many, many years. Um, but Singapore had to do it, so it's a bit more modernized, it's a bit more digital, it's a bit more responsive. Asia, to me, is just a bit more responsive when it comes to banking, gold storage, stuff like that, whereas Europe can be a bit stodgy. Uh, Asia, while it does have some of its own bureaucracy, for something like this, it's much more responsive. And they're much more innovative because they're, they've really been trying to come up and become the new wealth haven. So I like Singapore a lot. I know a lot of people in the gold business and in the storage business in Singapore, there's a number of good facilities. Um, number two is Switzerland. I do like Switzerland because it has that great long-term reputation. Again, you're going to get, in some cases, a bit more bureaucracy. But anyone who sells gold and offers storage online who's worth their salt is going to have an option in Zurich. Okay. So Switzerland, not a bad option. Um, they're obviously in Europe. They're surrounded by the European Union. But I think it's a good option. Number three is New Zealand. Now, New Zealand certainly has a relationship with Western countries. They're buddy-buddy, but they're also quite neutral. They're really at the edge of the world, which I kind of like. Uh, and they are really making a push to be uh, a wealth haven. It would not be my number one pick. But I think if you're diversifying and holding assets in different countries, New Zealand does deserve a place on the list. Um, and I think that you know, being far-flung is interesting. I think having a passport from a, a bit of a far-flung country or a bank account in an emerging world off the radar country is an interesting way to diversify and to take advantage of the next big place. Um, and so New Zealand obviously being super developed uh, is a good place to store assets like precious metals. So I like that one a lot. There's a couple of facilities there. So those are my top three suggestions. I actually wrote a longer form article on this explaining my methodology and explaining some of my top picks. You can click on the link here in the description to go and read that article. If you are a gold investor, if you are a silver investor, I want to know your thoughts on this. What is the proportion of gold that you should keep at home versus keep overseas? Personally, I like things vaulted in places where they are uh, locked down, but I want to hear your comments. If one of these options sounds better to you than the others, leave a comment. I want to know what you think. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your nomad capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.